Hello and welcome to today's daily devotional. The last time I was on, I was looking at a verse from Romans that said the wages of sin is death. And it felt like quite a heavy verse. Uh, but today, just a couple of days later, um, we're looking at Romans 5 verse 8. And it is one of the great promises and truths of the Christian faith. So let me read it for us before we unpack it a little bit. Romans 5 verse 8 says this. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Some very big words in there and so much that we could delve into. But I want to focus firstly on the idea of love. I don't know if you've come across the concept that uh, was popularised by Gary Chapman about five love languages, but I think they're quite a helpful way as we go about our daily lives to think about how we give and receive love. The five love languages that Chapman identifies are um, physical touch, so hugs, kisses, uh, holding people, holding hands, that kind of love, um, the parent caressing the child, uh, lovers touching one another. Um, that's the first one. So physical touch. Secondly, acts of service. So doing practical things for people, uh, cooking meals, doing the laundry, clearing up, clearing snow from the path, whatever it is. Uh, that's the second one. Third one is time, um, giving quality time, spending quality time with people, being very available and not making people feel like you're in a rush and you're always looking over their shoulder for the next thing or the next person. The fourth one is thoughtful gifts or presents. I have to admit, I'm a little bit of a child about presents. I do love getting little gifts. Um, they don't have to be big or expensive, but for people who, for whom that is their love language, they just enjoy uh, the thrill of unwrapping things or, or being thought of in that way. And the fifth one is words, affirming words, uh, where we praise and encourage, uh, perhaps writing notes, perhaps writing poems or whatever it is, but um, making words a way of expressing our love. And when Chapman explores these five different love languages, he says that one of the things we have to learn is what are our own love languages, the ways that we enjoy receiving love. And of course, all of us will be a bit of a mixture of all five, but we probably have one or two predominant love languages. So uh, how do you enjoy being loved? Do you enjoy being held? Do you enjoy somebody making a meal for you, talking with you, making time for you or giving you gifts? But also to be aware that people around us might have a different love language. Um, they might enjoy and receive love best in a way that is different from the way that we do ourselves. And so when we work on relationships, we need to love people in the way that they understand, not just in the way that we like to express it. All of which brings me back to our verse because it talks about God demonstrating his love for us. God demonstrates his love for us in this, says Paul. God shows us his love. Now, God's love for us is expressed in so many ways, um, in the beauty of creation, uh, in his constant availability when we pray, in the beautiful words and promises of the Bible, in the kindness he shows us, the little things in our day that we just know have been ordained by God. Uh, in all kinds of ways, God shows us his love. But here, Paul takes it to a whole other level because he is talking about love that lays down its life. And the Bible says that, doesn't it? Greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life for their friends. And here we talk about, think about Jesus laying down his life for us. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is love of a whole different order, well beyond the cup of tea, the phone call, uh, the availability to talk, the bar of chocolate bought spontaneously and presented uh, with kindness. Christ died for us. The idea of sacrifice is one that just 
rings so true and so deep for us, doesn't it? We find it in literature and films. We see it in the character of Katniss Everdeen in The Hunger Games, that she is prepared to sacrifice her life for her sister. We see it uh, a bit further back in literature, A Tale of Two Cities, where Sidney Carter is prepared to give his life um, for the hero of the tale. We see it even in Harry Potter, where his mother, Lily, lays down her life for her newborn baby. And it resonates with us so deeply that somebody would give their life for another. But in those books and stories, very often the person that is um, being saved is innocent or pure in some ways, blameless. And yet here Paul says, no, it's not like that with us. We were still sinners when Christ died for us. We were still entrapped by sin, the wages of which is death. We were still slaves to sin. We were still caught up in those attitudes and actions and habits. We were still caught up in the damage and the web of sin that is so sticky that we can't escape it on our own. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, death is something that is all around us at the moment. With the day I'm recording this, we've just heard that 100,000 people in the UK have now died of COVID and those numbers will have risen by the time that you see this. Every death represents a loss and grief for different people, for families, for friends and colleagues. And this is a, a terrible thing, a tragic thing. But as Christians, we are told that we do not need to grieve as those who have no hope. And that is because we have the historical fact of Jesus's death and not only his death, but his resurrection, his triumph over death. When he died, he took that wage that we have earned and instead he gives us the free gift of eternal life. And that death that he paid for our death is validated and guaranteed by the re resurrection, by the empty tomb 2000 years ago, where the body could not be found because he had risen. So as Christians, we need not fear death. We need not be cynical about death. We need not avoid the idea of death or mention it necessarily in hushed tones. Of course, we must be compassionate and kind to those who are grieving. And when we grieve ourselves, we can express our lament and our sorrow. We don't need to pretend that we don't feel loss and pain when we grieve. But ultimately, we can hold on to the truth of this amazing verse. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave up your life for us. You took the wages of sin, which is death, and you offer us the free gift of eternal life, guaranteed with the seal of your resurrection from the dead and your triumph over the grave. So be with us in our daily lives, in the love that we show to others, in the grief that we sometimes express, but help us to know the hope and the truth and the power of your resurrection and your love for us. In your name we pray. Amen.